Well, hello, and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to talk about Hebrews 11. This is that famous chapter on faith. And faith is one of those difficult things in the Bible. When you go through this chapter and the things God asks people to do, like sacrifice your own son. And I spent a lot of time lately in the uh, major prophets and the minor prophets. And again, some of the things God asks people to do, you know, marry a prostitute just to show, you know, Israel's sin and lying on your side for many, many days and really weird things. So I'll fully admit it. You know, I don't do the best with faith. I try very hard to trust in God. But, you know, I, I love what Doubting Thomas said. I believe help my unbelief. <laughs> I love that. So I do believe. But as anybody else, I do struggle with unbelief occasionally. So let's help this struggle with unbelief. Let's help each other together. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11.1. 11, now faith is assurance of things hoped for, proof of things not seen. For by this, the elders obtained testimony. By faith, we understand that the universe has been framed by the word of God, so that what is seen has not been made out of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he had testimony given to him that he was righteous. God testifying with respect to his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he wouldn't see death, and he was not found, because God translated him. For he has had testimony given to him that before his translation, he had been well pleasing to God. Without faith, it is impossible to be well-pleasing to him. For he who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned about things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared a ship for the saving of his house, through which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed to go out to the place which he was to receive for an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he went. By faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a land not his own, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for the city, which has the foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, even Sarah herself received power to conceive, and she bore a child when she was past age, since she counted him faithful who had promised. Therefore, as many as the stars of the sky in the multitude, and as innumerable as the sand, which is by the seashore, were fathered by one man, and him as good as dead. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them and embraced them from afar, and having confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. If indeed they had been thinking of that country from which they went out, they would have had enough time to return. But now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed of them to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. 
by faith. Abraham, being tested, offered up Isaac. Yes, he who had gladly received the promises was offering up his one and only son, to whom it was said, your offspring will be counted as from Isaac. This came from Genesis 21, 12. God said to Abraham, don't let it be grievous in your sight because of the boy and because of your servant. In all that Sarah says to you, listen to her voice, for your offspring will be named through Isaac. Concluding that God is able to raise up even from the dead. Figuratively speaking, he also did receive him back from the dead. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, even concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to share ill treatment with God's people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a time, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood that the destroyer of the firstborn should not touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as on dry land when the Egyptians tried to do so. They were swallowed up. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith. Rahab the prostitute didn't perish with those who were disobedient, having received the spies in peace. What more shall I say? For the time would fail me if I told you of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked out righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, grew mighty in war, and caused foreign armies to flee. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, not accepting their deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others were tried by mocking and scourging. Yes, moreover, by bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn apart. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They ran around in sheepskins and in goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts, mountains, caves, and the holes of the earth. These all, having had testimony given to them through their faith, didn't receive the promise. God having provided some better thing concerning us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. May God add blessing to the reading of his word. So what did we learn about faith from Hebrews 11? In 11.1, 11, it said, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, proof of things not seen. It's 
one of the biggest problems I have is I can't see God. How do you believe in something you can't see? But this is assurance. You get assurance through faith of things that you can't see. And then in verse 11, by faith, we understand that the universe has been framed by the word of God, so that what is seen has not been made out of things which are visible. Interesting to me, really, really interesting, because uh, that seems to blow science right out of the water. You can't prove it by science if what is seen has not been made out of things which are visible. Science is based on the things we see that are visible. Fascinating to me. So you can't prove God by science. So science will come around and say, creation and creation isn't scientific. So therefore, it's not true. But this just turns that on its head. And then all these by faith statements, by faith, Abel, by faith, Enoch. And basically what every one of these are saying is, they believed an unseen God for things that are unseen. How do you do that? You know, um, I like this one in verse 11. By faith, even Sarah herself received power to conceive, and she bore a child when she was past age, since she counted him faithful who had promised. How do they do that? Because she counted him faithful who had promised. And I like verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them and embraced them from afar. So they had faith in things they couldn't see. It was coming, but they never saw it. It's so again, all these other faith statements, all these things. You know, and it goes on. There's a whole list of other people, too. So the idea is you believe in an unseen God for things that are unseen. And why? Because you believe the person who said it is faithful. So let's help each other in our faith journey. It's difficult to have faith. Let's be kind to one another. Let's continue to learn together.